All right, guys, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day and end of week video for March 27th. So uh, theme of the day really quick, uh, Tricky Fridays continue. Uh, they continue to kind of uh, be very, very whippy price action. Uh, hard to predict, hard to determine what's going to happen on these Fridays. Uh, no one seems to really want to have a lot of risk going into the weekend, so they, they remain very difficult days. Um, to trade unless you're super fast and don't have a lot of positions on uh, we'll talk a little bit about strategy for next week but let's just go through the numbers spy finished down 2.7 percent Q's finished down 3.4 percent small caps also finished down 3.4 percent uh, TLT big move in TLT we'll, we'll talk about what happened at the end of the day today um, gold was basically a non-factor for the day uh, down 60 basis points. I was actually looking at a trade in this. Uh, we talked about it in the pre-market session, never materialized, didn't do anything. Uh, sector performers, utilities on fire today. Uh, they finished green for the day, despite the market selling off at the end of the day. And from from the open, they were up 3.7%. And if you take a look at some of the other groups, it was a lot of, um, it was a lot of uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I would say value, but defensive. You also had REITs, consumer staples. So this was mainly, while other things were rallying at the, you know, up until about 3.30 today, uh, this was mainly a uh, more value-ish and, um, and definitely defensive, right? Defensives. The groups that underperformed, <clears throat> the usual suspects, the energy names, crude was, um, again, you know, uh, I think closed around the lows today around the lows for the week i think so pretty ugly market there in crude you know maybe telling us something going into next week um as as ugly as that crude market is metals and mining were down a lot tech was even down to uh, the tech etf was down 4.4 percent today so again big difference between higher beta and low beta stuff today uh low beta really outperformed and, and high beta uh, underperformed pretty decently. So let's go. So that's the performance for the week. Um, what happened here towards the end of the day, you know, just to kind of summarize the day, we, we, we sold off into the open. We had a little bit of a bounce around 11 o'clock. Um, we try to get into value that's known as a rejection. Uh, again, if you're using the market webs indicator that we use, which which is an amazing, uh, you know, gives us uh, amazing support and resistance levels. Uh, we finally did get into into value. Uh, this didn't really materialize until about 1:30, um, and then we had a nice rip up, uh, and it was a pretty much nice afternoon till about. 3:30, you know, and just when you think you kind of have this market figured out, when they're talking about these portfolio rebalances and money into equity out of bonds, the exact opposite happens today. So, um, again, I had mentioned that um, the one thing that I was a little bit wary about was that people on, you know, and, and I'm not faulting CNBC or anything like that, but when they start talking about this on CNBC, it's usually, it's not, it usually doesn't happen. So I was surprised when this, when we had the big imbalance yesterday, because usually when they're talking about it, it's usually not going to happen. Um, this was the main story in case you missed this. I don't know why the Fed decided to release this news 20 minutes before the close, but they are cutting down their treasury buying, right? That stimulus going into the market. Now, they're just reducing it. I think they're, what they're doing is $75 billion right now. They're reducing it to $60 billion. Now, normally you would say, oh, that's not that big of a, you know, it's not that of a big deal. But right now in this market, uh, you know, with what is going on, with everything being shut down, uh, it just shows you that you need that stimulus, right? Uh, we've got nothing really to fall back on, but you know the the Fed right now is doing its best to to prop up this market until the, until the um, economy reopens. So and you know until everything reopens, right? They're the ones who are putting the backstop. So if they take away that punch bowl, this is what's going to happen. Um, you're going to get a nasty move down like this, like we saw. Really tricky again. Um, we got right to the top of value, so that was hindsight 2020. That was a great place to take profits, and and it was even said, um, you know, one of the really good traders in the room, uh, in the Tribeca Trade Group room, was saying, "Hey, you got everything that you're looking for at the end of the day. This is this is a place to take your money and run." Um, so, really nice, uh, just you know, really nice words to put in. Um, that was about uh, you know 3:30. And sure enough, that that was the right place. So um, 
right back to the to the low of the day so again very very ugly price action i think you know definitely um the market started to make these moves before that headline was out because of course someone always knows but um but that's the situation i think that you know that also added to a little bit of a moc sell imbalance as well but i think really that that's what we had on our hands today was um that headline coming out now someone said to me uh in the room a lot of people had some questions about this well if they're buying less treasuries then then why did the tlt etf take off why did the long bond etf take off like this um to finish up 2.7 percent for the day um why because when you when the spigots are open and when they are stimulating the economy by putting more money into the economy that means it's, it it kind of gives a, a a risk um you know people are buying more riskier things when you start to tighten right like reducing interest rates people go into more safety assets so even though they're reducing the the their pre their treasury buying um, this caught a huge move at the end of the day because it's a rush out of equities and back into bonds. Um, so um, it should set up for, for an interesting you know, next week. I just wanted to recap the, the price action. Um, if you want to see the performance for the week, even with the move that we had today, which was down, um, the performance was just very, very strong you know, for the week. SPY finished up 11% for the week. Small caps also finished up. Q's actually underperformed for the week. But you could see some of these groups, I mean, just, you know, ginormous moves again. Um, the other thing, which I did not touch upon, which I've been uh, basically talking about all week long, is the VIX. Uh, when you have the VIX like this, right, above 50, you know, even above 40, Right? You can expect those type of whippy moves. Right, The market is telling you that it is pricing in, that the S&P is pricing in a huge amount of volatility in the short term. Right, So you have to make adjustments. I know this video is for, obviously, for information purposes only, and I'm not telling you what to do. But you have to realize that, that this is telling you that the market is moving multiples of uh, time faster you know, than what we were doing. Uh, let me just put the daily on here. Um, you know, than what we were doing a couple months ago. So uh, you have to be changing what you're doing if you're going to survive in this market. You cannot trade the same position size that you were doing a month ago. You can't have on the same amount of positions that you had on two months ago with the volatility like this. I, I know some, I've, have, I've had conversations with a couple traders and they're still doing the same things that they were doing two months ago. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Honestly, like, I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but if you're, if you're not understanding that, then you may not be one of, you know, you may want to step away from the, from the computer. If you're not making adjustments, uh, and again, this is, so again, I'll stop talking about this because I've talked about this nonstop now for basically for weeks. Um, the bottom line is here, we have no breakdown in the VIX, right? We, we had, um, you know, we've kind of come in and we've tested this 20 period moving average, right? So a move off the highs, but we don't really know where this thing is going to go. We don't really have any, um, any divergences right now, like currently today or yesterday, that's that's telling us like, hey, the VIX is breaking down, even though the market is, market's going down. Right now, they're kind of confirming one another. So what does that mean? Just need some, you need more time. And until this kind of cleans up, you know, uh, we're also, I think, caught between two moving averages, right? And we've got a couple more days. It looks like we're going to open up April, probably inside value. But there's a number of different outcomes that could happen, right? And I don't mean to say this to be general because I hate when people try to say both things so that there is so that they end up, you know, being right. I see the guys who do these videos and I, I don't understand what they're doing. But <laughs> uh, sorry, it's Friday and I don't want to go off too far off tan tangent here, but we could, I mean, it's possible if we lose this five period moving average, then who knows, maybe we could see that retest that everybody seems to be talking about. Um, if not, we could also kind of hang in here and hold and then maybe shoot back up here. But I think it's a little bit too difficult right now to determine that, especially with the, like, I need something to give me a signal that's going to tell me otherwise. That's basically going to tell me, um, hey, there's a, there's a divergence going on, like with the VIX. Like if I were to see the VIX like shoot 
below 50 and we were here, I would say, hey, that's a good signal for next week. But I think for now, uh, remain lightly, as what I'm doing is remaining lightly positioned. Um, I'm still trying to, uh, you know, I'm still having really good success for the most part. Not every trade is perfect. Um, and that's not going to happen for anybody, right? But um, here's what I did for, for the day. Um, I added to my mic. This is my only call position uh, that I've got on that I've added in the last few weeks is Microsoft January 165 calls. Um, I tried trading a little Clorox today because I did realize that the, that the defenses were strong. Um, I've, unfortunately, I should have picked the utility because those were those went off really nice. But um, I got involved in a little bit of Zoom. Team did not work, so I bailed on it. Um, sometimes names just don't have momentum in them, and I don't want to be, uh, you know, the name of the game right now is to not get caught up um, staring at something that's not moving. So I took, I did take that position off uh, out of team for, for a loss there. Um, I tried some restoration hardware. That worked. Um, uh Restoration hardware re reports on Monday post close. Um, this was the one trade that I kind of got a little bit caught in. Um, take two. I was lucky, you know. Again, have to take targets in this market. Can't be too greedy. Um, and I also hit a target on the Microsoft calls, but um, then there was the washout. So anything else, you know, I was holding. I got, I got, uh, you know, dinged on, which was fine because I actually ended up higher than where we were this morning. So. Um, it was a it was a, a small profitable day for me today, but you know where I w of course when you look at where you were at 3:30 you're like wow I'm having a great day, um, but it is what it is you know I think you just kind of the takeaway from today, and and a wrap to this week and and strategy for next week is just remain light, let this market come to you. Do not try to figure this thing out in one day. Um, it's a process. So you just kind of have to be, I know the other word that I've been saying over and over is patient. Um, I think there's too many people that are trying to figure this market out and not taking it for what it is, which is really good opportunity to day trade. And if you could do it both directions, even better. Um, and that's, it, that is what it is. And, um, and that's where the opportunity is right now. All right, guys, have a great night. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. And I'll see you guys. Uh, uh, I'll send out the, the weekend video um, where we kind of do a little bit more detailed analysis. We'll talk more about single stocks and, and get you ready for the, uh, for, the, for the week ahead. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on Monday.